Hey everyone, I am Tarun and today we are going to talk about one of the most common confusions amongst new programmers that is the difference between the assignment and the equality operators. So assignment operators allow us to assign a value to a variable. So if I say x is equal to 5, it means that I am assigning the value 5 to the variable x. Similarly, if I say y is equal to 2.3, that means I'm assigning the value 2.3 to the variable y. On the other hand, the equality operator, which uses a double equal to sign, this is a relational operator. It allows us to check whether the two given values are equal or not. So if I say x equal equal 5, this will return true if x is equal to 5, it will return false if x is not. So in this case, the value of x was equal to 5. So in this case, it will return true. On the other hand, if I had a statement like x equal equal 7, this would have returned false. So the equality operator is a relational operator which allows us to check the equality between two values. Assignment operator allows us to assign a value to a given variable. And that's it. That's the simplest difference between these two operators. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Hey everyone, I'm Tarun and today we are going to be talking about the if-else statements in Java. If-else statements are control statements which allow us to change the control of our program based on some condition. The syntax for if is as follows. So first of all, we write the if keyword followed by parentheses and inside these parentheses, we write some condition. Note that this condition must always return a Boolean value. Followed by the condition, we write a block of statements wrapped inside curly braces. The lines enclosed inside these curly braces are referred to as the body of the if, or you can just say the if block. This if may or may not be preceded by else if and else statements. However, those are optional. So let us see it in action. Let's say that I am writing a program where I need to read a number from a user and I need to print whether the number is a positive number or a negative number. So I can write an if condition as follows. I can say if x is greater than zero. So if x, the input value is greater than zero, I can say, okay, that means we have a positive number. In case the value of x is less than zero, that means we have a negative number. So following the if, I can write an else if statement. So I can say else if x is less than 0. So that means that the number must be a negative number. So let us run this. And let me give the input as 5. And you can see that I get the output as a positive number. Let me rerun this program. And this time I will provide the value as minus 3. And you can see that I get the output as negative number. Let's say I want to add a third condition as well. So maybe I can write it as else if x equal equal 0. Since 0 is not a positive or a negative integer, it makes sense to handle it separately. So I can say value is 0. However, there since it is only the last condition that is a number can either be positive or negative or zero so it's not it the third condition is kind of redundant 
so i can skip out writing the condition and i can just leave it as else part the else part runs whatever is left so what happens in this flow is that first of all the if condition is checked then if the if condition does not get satisfied then in that case the program moves forward and checks the next else if condition if in this case this is not satisfied either then it moves on and it will keep on going and going until it comes across a condition that is satisfied if it gets no condition is satisfied then it goes on and executes the else part so if i run this program and i give the input now as zero you will see that i get the output as value is zero i would like to mention that we can have as many else ifs as we want we can also have none of the else ifs even that is an option the else block also is optional the only compulsory part in an if statement is the if block itself so that's it for if else and i will see you in the next video thank you for watching hey everyone welcome back my name is tarun and today we are going to be look, looking at a problem that is check odd or even it says that we are given an integer number n and we are required to tell whether the number is odd or even so for example the input is 5 and the output should be odd similarly if the input is let's say 20 then we are required to print even so let us dive into the code and try to solve this problem. So over here, I have an integer being uh, taken as the input in the variable x. So now to check whether the number is odd or even, we can put a very simple condition on it. Each and every even number is divisible by 2. We know that each and every even number has to be divisible by 2 by its very definition. So if we can just check the divisibility of a number by 2, that would solve our problem, wouldn't it? So let's try it out. So I can say if my variable x is divisible by 2. Now how do we check for divisibility? Divisibility by its nature implies that the number when divided by 2, so my number x when divided by 2 should return the remainder as 0. And how do we check the remainder? We remember that we can use the modulo operator for this. So I can check if x modulo 2 is equal to 0. So in this case, I know that the number is an even number or else all other cases, it is going to be an odd number. So let us check this out. So I can write if x modulo 2 equal equal 0, which means I'm checking whether the division of x by 2 yields the remainder 0. If it does, then I'll say that the number is even. For all other cases, and there is only one other case left. Uh, so I can just say else the number is odd. So let us try this out. So if I give the input as, let's say, 5, I get the output as odd. Similarly, let me rerun this and I'll give the input as 10. And you can see that I get the output as even. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Hey everyone, I'm Tarun and today we are talking about switch statements in Java. Switch statements are control transfer statements which allow us to execute some specific code based on the equality of a given variable. So let us try to understand it better. 
So let's say that I have a variable called weather, which stores the state of the weather at a given time. Let's say that based on the value of this weather, I would like to notify my user to take some precautions. So let's say that if the weather is rainy, I would like the user to take an umbrella. Similarly, if the weather is sunny, I would say wear sunglasses. Or if the weather is not known, if it is neither of these two values, I would ask the user to check weather forecast. Now the program that you see in front of you right now using the if else statements, this is perfectly valid and there's no issues with this. But the thing is that there is a better way to write it and that is using the switch statements. So I can write this program like this. So the switch statement, it takes in a variable as an argument. So over here, the variable is the weather variable. It performs equality checks based on different cases. So for example, the first case that we check is the case when it is the, when the weather is rainy. And in case the weather is rainy, I would like to tell the user to take an umbrella. So I print this statement inside this block and I end the case with a break statement. Note that every case must be terminated with a break statement. If you do not do it, there will be consequences, which we'll see in just a few minutes. Similarly, the next case that I want to execute is case sunny when the when the value of the variable weather is sunny. So in that case, I want to print this statement wear sunglasses and I end this case with a break statement. In case neither of these two matches, then as a default, I would like to print this statement check weather forecast. The default statement is equivalent to the else clause in if else. Note that the default statement must always be at the end of the switch, uh, switch body and it doesn't really need a break statement. So let us try out solving a problem with this. So let's say that the problem is days in a month. We are required, we are provided the value, the month number as input and we are required to print the name of that month and the days in that month. So for example, the input is three, then we know that the third month in the calendar is March and there are 31 days inside it. Similarly, if the input was one, my output would have been January and 31 days. So now let us try solving this using switch case. So let's say we are reading the input of the month number in the variable month. Now let us write switch. And for each case, I'm required to check the value of this variable and find the corresponding months to it. So for case one, I can say I should print January and then I should print 31 days. To end this case, I would write a break statement. Similarly, for case two, we know that the second month is February and there are 28 days in it. We are assuming it to be a non-leap year. So similarly, you can guess that there would be 12 cases in total, one for each month. So let me write that down and I'll be back in just a second. So this is what our switch case would look like. We have 12 cases in total and for each case, we print the name of the month and the days in that month. If the user provides an invalid value that is not between the range of one to 12, we print, we, it goes into the default case and we print invalid month number. So let us try executing this program. So if I provide the input as let's say three, you can see that I get the output as March 31 days. Let me try it once again and I will give it the value one and you can see that I get January 31 days. So this is how the switch case works. What it does is first of all, it will go ahead and check 
the case one. If case one is not satisfied, it will move to case two, then to the third case, fourth and so on. It will go on and check each case one by one till it finds the case that satisfies the condition and then it will execute the code block corresponding to that case. Now let us say that I miss out on writing the break statement. What happens then? So let me, let me comment out a few break statements. So I'll comment out the break statement for, for case one, case two, case three, and let's just say for case four, let me remove the first four break statements. So if I execute this code now, and if I provide the input as one, let's say, you can see that the output that I get is January 31 days, February 28 days, March 31, April 30 and May 31. So what happened over here? So basically when I provided the input as one, the switch case was matched at the very first case itself. So it printed these two statements in the output, but it didn't stop there. Since the break statement was missing, it went and followed through. So this is known as the concept of fall through. So the interpreter kept on falling through the cases and it printed the statements in the next case as well. And then the next, then the next, and then the next till it came across a break statement. And as soon as it encountered a break statement, it stopped proceeding any further. If there were no break statements inside this entire switch case, it would have continued printing all the print statements including the print statement in the default section. So that is why print statements are break statements are very, very important. So now this is it for the simple switch case. Now there is an enhanced version of this as well, which is known as the enhanced switch case. So let us see that as well. So to write enhanced switch case, we only have to make a few modifications. So first of all, we remove the colon from after the case. And instead of the colon, we write the arrow symbol. Following the arrow symbol, we write curly braces. And we wrap the statements that we are looking to execute inside those curly braces. And then we can also remove the break statement. The break statement is not needed any further. So this is an example of the enhanced switch case. Note that either all of your cases must be in the normal switch case or in the enhanced form. You cannot have a mix and match like this. So thus this program will not execute currently. I must revert it back to the original one. Or maybe what I can do is I can ask my IntelliJ to convert it to the enhanced switch version for me with just one click. So I hover over the switch statement and I click on replace with enhanced switch statement. And with just one click, we can see that IntelliJ has modified my entire switch block. All the cases have now been modified to the enhanced switch statement. This is much more neater and cleaner. The break statements are not there anymore. And instead we only have code blocks. So it is much more intuitive for the programmer to understand. Note that if you have two or more than two statements in only those cases, you actually need the braces. If you only have one statement like the default case over here, you can simply write that statement without the braces. You can optionally add braces over here as well if you want. But as I said, this is just optional. So this is an example of enhanced switch case. Let us try out another problem for switch case. So the problem is vowel or consonant. So we are provided a lowercase character as input and we are required to report whether that character is a vowel or a consonant. 
so our input is going to be between a to z lower case characters only so if the input is small e we report it as a verbal if let's say the user provided the input as x then we would have given the output as consonant so let us try out this problem in the code so over here i am reading an input in char uh, input character from the user and we are going to solve it with switch case so i can create five cases for the five vowels so i can say case a in that case i print vowel and i can have a break statement similarly i create a case for e and since i'm going to be repeating the same behavior for all five of the vowels it would be easier to just use the fall through so i can maybe put all the five cases over here and i can write it like this so a e i o u so the five vowels and in case either of these cases matches i will print vowel and i'll and then i'll break and for all the other characters so i can just put all of those in a default statement and i can say consonant and that's it so let me try to execute this program and i will provide the input as let's say e i get the output as vowel which is correct let me provide the input as y it says consonant so in case either of these five cases matches it will fall through and it will finally print this statement vowel and then break out of it however if you have the same body for multiple cases there is an even simpler way of writing it so i can write all five of these cases in one single statement so i can have a case as case a e i o u all five in a single case even this is allowed and then when i execute this program let me provide the input as i and you can see that i get the output as vowel so you can even put multiple values in a single case java will one by one check the will compare the value one by one with each of these values inside your case and if even a single one of them matches it will execute the code block corresponding to it you can of course modify it to the enhanced switch case as well if needed so i can maybe modify it in this case i can simply remove the break statement and for the default case i can simply write it like this now this is an enhanced switch case so i will give the input as let's say h and i get the output as consonant so that's it for switch cases hope you understood it hope you enjoyed this tutorial and i will see you in the next one thank you for watching Hey everyone, Tarun here, and today we are going to be talking about ternary operators in Java. So, the ternary operator is a very condensed and a compact form of if-else statement. It evaluates a condition and executes the code based on that condition. So, let us see. So, the syntax for the ternary operator is as follows: We have a condition, and based on the, that condition, whether it returns true or false, we evaluate some expression. in case the condition returns 